Uh, hi, I'm Sheikh. Uh, I'm a PhD student at UMass. Uh, this is the joint work uh, with my lab mates and uh, my friends here. Uh, so I'm just going to the task description because I have less time. So uh, the task description uh, here is, uh, at first we envision that there is a user who is searching with a topic, which is ID data arrays, and um, then he, she issues a query to a search engine and gets a rank list of documents. Um, and while inspecting those documents, she comes across a sentence where she finds an interesting entity, which is Susan Butcher. And uh, she is interested in entity because she, uh, Susan Butcher was the winner of ID.org and she wants to find other names uh, who were also the winners. So if you see this sentence and this animated entity inside it, you can think of this as an extraction problem where you have only one training sentence and one entity. But this is uh, extraction models would definitely fail uh, because it is a very less amount of data. So what do you do in that case? Uh, can you do matching models or retrieval? Uh, so the problem is uh, like finding uh, entities with very limited amount of data. And then uh, I would like to talk a bit about evaluation. Uh, if you see that the topic is a data database, and I say that Susan Butcher is a relevant entity and uh, assuming there is a model that can retrieve three sentences, uh, just retrieve three sentences, uh, we can see that uh, the red ones, red entities, uh, those are the relevant ones, those are the winners of ID data arrays. But if you look at uh, the third sentence, uh, we say it is non-relevant. But still there is a winner, Martin Busser, in there, uh, but if what from user perspective we see that the user has already seen Martin Busser there, so there is no benefit of bringing it again. So we want sentences that contain noble entities. And the uh, evaluation, once you have this relevant and non-relevant uh, definition, you can compute map. But uh, in our case, we are more interested in entity recall uh, at top three sentences. So if you see that there are three new entities retrieved in these three sentences. And if, assuming there are 10 list entities, uh, 10 entities that it could retrieve, only 30% of the entities could be retrieved in the top three sentences. So what percentage of the entities could be retrieved in top K sentences is uh, also an important part of the evaluation because what we are looking at like an interactive system where a user would be able to look at the sentences and then find those entities. So uh, the data set construction, uh, we use Trek uh, least QA uh, for our data set because we uh, found that it's a good match of the scenario that we're envisioning. So how Trek least QA data set is constructed? Uh, this is a topic, as you can see again. Uh, this, this is an example from the data set actually. The topic is ID directories, and uh, we also have a list question from Craig uh, QA dataset, which asks for the people names who are the winner of ID error, and also Craig list QA provides us the names in there. Right? And uh, there is another thing that we got from list QA is like um, with the topic ID directories, uh, they use uh, price search engine to achieve. Uh, thousand documents uh, from uh, Acquaint News Corpus, and uh, those uh, we got from uh, the QA. What we did is we break down those documents into sentences. Uh, we use all document information, and again, this uh, query, uh, topic editor agrees, we create a sentence corpus. Uh, and finally, what we do, we randomly pick uh, one entity uh, from the list of answers, and then we just grab in the sentence corpus, find all the sentences that contains this entity, Susan Butcher, and then we judge one sentence ourselves to say that, okay, that's the indicative, uh, indication of information need, and the information extraction community will see that as training data, and we see that as a query for searching. And then, um, just the comparison with the related task, there is corpus-based set expansion task which only takes seed like names of Susan, uh, names like Susan Butcher and finds uh, similar entities. 
uh, but they use knowledge base and also, uh, but they retrieve from free text corpus, similar to us, but they have uh, to use knowledge base for defining the type of the entity. And in our case, uh, we have um, this topic and uh, seed plus context, which uh, is different from other tasks. And information extraction, as I say, that we apply uh, traditional information retrieval based uh, information extraction baselines, and that do not work because we have very less amount of data. So uh, the approach, uh, you can get the details of the approach uh, in the poster. Uh, it's a 10-minute presentation. Uh, so I just like gave a rough sketch of what we did. Uh, like we have a judged uh, sentence uh, that is our information in here. Now it becomes a query. We have a ranking uh, algorithm, uh, and we can once we get the rank list of sentences, uh, I told that we can get it evaluated using the names uh, that are available here. We have the ground truth answers. Uh, so what happens uh, in terms of ranking? Uh, we uh, tried out uh, simpler baselines. Uh, to find uh, similar sentences to the query sentence. We use PM25 CRF uh, conditional random field model for entity extraction. And we also used a semantic matching mo model that we proposed. Uh, and uh, we found that semantic ma matching model works well. To make things uh, further ahead, we did a query expansion uh, approach. Uh, where we had this seed, uh, I told that, and we ripped into the sentence corpus. With the name Susan Butcher, we retrieved all the sentences about Susan Butcher, and then we constructed a query out of it using uh, our proposed query expansion technique that again you can come and see in the poster. Um, and then uh, after ranking, um, we used the same, same semantic matching process and uh, obtained the rank list of sentences. And uh, we also did a rank list filtering with uh, named entity recognition. So what we want, uh, we want a list of person names, basically, who were a uh, winner of a leader of race, right? So we can see our query is uh, a sentence, and there is a person name, and we, we can use named entity recognition to get the uh, label of that, like the person, and then when we are retrieving sentences, uh, if a sentence doesn't contain any person in there, we don't need to retrieve it, right? We can set its score to zero. And then uh, if a sentence uh, contains a person entity, but it has been already seen in the rank list, like Martin Pusser in the fourth sentence, it has already been observed in the rank list, so we also do not contain such sentences. So we are generating a summary with novel entities here, uh, and that's why uh, we use named entity uh, recognition to filter out. Uh, but we have problem with other entity types, like there are different entities in the data set, like song, movie, book, uh, for which this trivial uh, filtering doesn't work. Uh, we are uh, working on fine-grained named entity recognition to better build better summaries. And, uh, so the results, it's a like summary of the things. Uh, so we show that uh, query expansion works. Uh, the, our proposed query expansion, and uh, we uh, applied a traditional CRF baseline, uh, conditional random field based one, which performs really poorly. And uh, we show the gain in terms of we call it 10 and we call it 20 here. I described those metrics in the earlier slides, uh, how we compute them. Um, and that's it. So, in conclusion, we introduce an entity list extraction problem with a single annotated sentence and a topic. Uh, we provided a semant semantic matching model, uh, which we discuss in the poster if you would like to. And uh, we showed that query expansion and linear based filtering is useful for this task. And we have both said that performance can be improved with uh, improved superior matching models uh, as well as type filtering models. We show that for entity list extraction, retrieval works better with limited data. So thank you for listening to the talk, and uh, thanks to Cigar for a generous travel grant. Okay, thank you.